it's a very long publication. It's uh, <coughs> um, meant to be an entire edition of The Lancet. Um, and the, you know, the, the intent of the commissions is really as a policy statement to say, you know, what is best practice and what should actually countries be requiring, you know, uh, for care of, of different diseases. And epilepsy is a very common disease. One in 26 people have epilepsy at some time in their life. Um, and it is, more importantly, it is a d disease when managed properly that you can actually completely change the tra trajectory of somebody's life and uh, uh, turn them from somebody with a disability to somebody who's functioning with no disability as long as you stop their seizures. Uh, and uh, we also know that the world has become much more complex in regards to the just the the care not of the treatment resistant patient because a lot of treatment resistant patients ultimately end up in the hands of specialists but um, the, the patient who's newly diagnosed there is a lot more to understand about what the optimal treatment is what you know there are now uh, 30 anti seizure medicines out there and how is you know the general neurologist going to keep up not only with what is the best drug what is the optimal choice in a given situation but how does my patient and their particular characteristics, you know, are they a woman of childbearing age? Are they an older individual? Are they overweight? Are they underweight? Are, do they have an underlying depression? There are so many different specific characteristics that in the hands of somebody who's an epilepsy specialist, we would say, use this, not that. Uh, but nobody who's treating, you know, uh, hundreds of conditions can keep all of that in their head. So we are trying to give them some guidelines, uh, including information that I think is very difficult to get even from a review article or, or anything else that basically says, here are the conditions that your patient might have or the characteristics. Here are all the drugs. What is a good choice? What is not a good choice? Um, and, and for this type of epilepsy, for this seizure type, is it a first choice, a second choice, or a last choice of medication? And then there are all the other things that go into ensuring that an individual with epilepsy is well treated and appropriately treated. And some of those things include making a diagnosis not only of epilepsy, because you are not done when you've made a diagnosis of epilepsy, you have to say what type of epilepsy, because that is really important in selecting therapy, and also in um, uh, the person self-managing, because you know, like we know in other areas like cancer, um, people know what kind of cancer they, they have. They, they also know what stage their cancer is, and they know what the molecular um, diagnosis is so that there's a proper... So now they can go to the Internet and they can search. Is there a trial for me? Is there, you know, um, what's going on with other people with that condition? Um, how do people do long term? They can do their own searching for information. If they don't know what kind of epilepsy they have, how can they do that? So we want to empower people to understand the epilepsy classification enough to be able to identify what kind of epilepsy people have and then tell their, uh, the people they care for uh, what kind of epilepsy they have. And then the last part is uh, just all of the other things that go into good care, such as making sure they have a rescue plan in case something goes wrong, making sure they're prepared for an optimal pregnancy, for example, telling them, and this is a really key thing, about why they need to take their medication every day. So, um, you know, I think it, it took me a long time, even being an epileptologist, to realize that for almost every other condition that people have, 80% adherence to your medication is considered spectacular. You're doing a great job. And for people who have epilepsy, if they were only taking 80% of their pills, then that would be a disaster. And so we are expecting 100% adherence from them, but we don't give them any more information than the person who we're only expecting 80% adherence. And it does take that extra additional effort to make sure they understand why and have tools in place to allow them, because you know all of us have tried to take pills every day, and we know we miss. 
you know, and they can't miss. So it's, a, it's another layer that they have to do to make sure that they don't miss. And just that small little piece can make all the difference in terms of making somebody seizure free. So these are the things we're going to be talking about in the commission report. These are the things we're going to be talking about here um, in our head talk.